It's now time for member statements. Member for Scarborough Southwest. Thank you, Speaker. Speaker, on Tuesday afternoon, I was visited by two of my constituents, brothers from Scarborough Southwest. They came to Queen's Park to share with me their very recent and tragic ordeal of losing their father. After being admitted to Scarborough Rouge Valley Hospital in June, the struggle this family went through trying to navigate our under-resourced and overburdened health care system was nothing short of a nightmare, ending with the death of their father in September. And this family is not alone. I know my colleagues across the aisle hear stories like this from their own constituents often. Families being told that hospitals are not allowed to transfer patients, that there isn't enough time to see the right specialist, that there is no beds available. I am deeply troubled, troubled that this government has cut back on the plan funding so critically needed for our hospitals, while at this time, at the same time telling public that they're increasing funding. This is a cut, plain and simple, coming at the worst of times. This puts families in peril and unfair pressure on the doctors, nurses, and support staff. I know and believe that this is not because our nurses, doctors, and hospital staff do not want to help, but we have burdened them with so much responsibility of giving the best care possible, but tied their hands with less and less resources. Scarborough Rouge Valley is the third largest hospital in Ontario, and yet they receive zero funding, provincial infrastructure funding, over the last six years. During this time, the population of Scarborough increased significantly. This is a hospital that includes a large number of low-income communities and has been operating nearly double their capacity. So I implore the Minister and the Premier to start taking the health and well-being of the communities in Scarborough, like those across the province, with the compassion and urgency needed. Thank you very much. Member statements. A member for Barry Innisfil. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I'm excited to stand in the legislature today to tell you about an important initiative started by my good friend Rick and Lillian Eckstein. They launched the Together We Stand Foundation. Lillian and Rick are proud first generation Canadians. Their family was a victim of the Holocaust, and they are so grateful they chose to settle in Canada. In order to give back to Canada, they wanted to honour the behind-the-scenes heroes, families who find themselves separated from their loved ones who are de deployed abroad defending and promoting democracy and our national interests. These families sacrifice time together to let us enjoy our freedom. Canada currently has over 2,000 highly trained Canadian Force personnel serving a variety of missions. Their families will celebrate the holiday season separated from their loved ones while, the, while they protect our interests abroad. It's time we recognize their sacrifices. Over the holiday season, each family of deployed personnel will receive a wonderful package of gift cards filled with donations. If you want to learn more about Rick and Lillian's initiative, please visit www.twsfoundation.ca. Please join me in giving a round of applause and thanks to Rick and Lillian for rallying Canadians from coast to coast to coast to support a cause that celebrates Canadian military families while their loved ones are deployed abroad. Thank you. Thank you. The member for Algoma, Manitoulin. Well, Speaker, guess where I was yesterday? I was with the Premier and the Minister of Northern Development and Mines, Energy and Indigenous Affairs, as referred to by the Minister of Everything. That's what he was referred to by the, uh, the Premier. Anyways, that certainly is a mouthful. Anyways, I was in White River, along with the communities of Horn Payne, Pick Mober. We were opening up the community, the, the new mine over at Hard Goal. You know, Horn Payne and White River have always been recognized for a strong forestry sector. Now they're in the ball game. Now they're also within the mining sector. Pick Mober and Hart developed a new partnership, a real you know, business to business, community to community, and I was proud to be part of the opening ceremony. There was a pipe song and a bear song, and I think the people who were there are a little bit taken back in regards to my singing skills with the drum. Anyways, uh, there was one thing that was missing from there. There was a lot of dignitaries that were missing, but my friend, the member from uh, Thunder Bay Superior North, Michael Gravel, was not there. Michael, I hope you're doing better. We are looking forward to seeing you back here. Now, this was really about building relationships and partnerships. And there's another thing that was missing there. 
one sentence that could have been said by either the Premier or the, uh, the Minister. And that is very simple. And it's the biggest step that we can do to reconciliation and is recognizing that we were on the traditional lands of the Pick Moberg First Nations people. It would have been perfect. And it's something that I put out, not to criticize, but just to tell the government, remember, remember our First Nations people. It is truly something and a relationship that we need to embrace. Thank you very much. Thank you. Member Statements, Member for Scarborough Centre. Cancer is a disease which affects far too many people in Ontario. It claims too many lives and forces people to endure often lengthy and painful treatments. Everyone in this House would like to see a cure for cancer, but even as we hope for our doctors and scientists to find a cure, we must ensure that we are continuing to offer people with cancer the treatment and support that they need. One of the groups that provides support to young women with breast cancer is called Rethink Breast Cancer, and they visit us here at the Legislature today. My colleague from Eglinton Lawrence welcomed them at their luncheon on behalf of the Minister of Health and Long-Term Care. Rethink Breast Cancer is an organization of young women who support other young women with breast cancer. They campaign for change and work to improve breast cancer services, treatment, and education for young women specifically. They remind us that young women do in fact get breast cancer and that these young women need support that is tailored to their specific needs. Thank you to Rethink Breast Cancer for all of the work that you do and must continue to do until a cure is found. Member Statements. The member for Thunder Bay, Atacokan. Thank you, Speaker. This afternoon, I am proud to speak to the House about a new Confederation College Technology Education and Collaboration Hub. I had the honour of attending the grand opening of the facility last Friday. This facility will have an immediate positive impact on the workforce and business community of my riding and throughout northwestern Ontario. Although some equipment has been moved over from the pre-existing buildings at the college, former President Jim Mathers is fundraising $5 million to fully equip the tech hub. The region's advanced manufacturing, technology and resource sectors will be well served by the facility as it will host research, incubation and technology transfer services. The tech hub will help develop a workforce that is skilled and employment ready in technology and trades. Importantly, it will provide specific programs for Indigenous learners, including pathways for skills trades. The Tech Hub will work collaboratively with innovators in the region. Community partners will be invited to participate in research development, and local entrepreneurs will be offered space to pursue their own projects. Overall, the Tech Hub will create opportunities and contribute to the development of skilled, employment-ready technology and trades workforce in our community and in Ontario. I would hope that the government contributes to ensure that the new Tech Hub is fully outfitted. Thank you. Member Statements. The member for Simcoe North. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. This, this Saturday, members from across my riding in Simcoe North will be celebrating former Mayor of Tay Township, Scott Warnock's retirement. Scott has spent 21 years tirelessly serving the residents of Tay. He has served nine years as councillor and 12 years as mayor. He has been a strong champion for Tay, has worked hard to represent small town rural values, and has always focused on cultivating local awareness and interest. Scott has consistently emphasized the importance of transparency and building partnerships in politics and in the community. My, my first few months serving as a new member of Provincial Parliament for Simcoe North, Scott was incredibly gracious and always willing to offer guidance and assistance whenever and wherever possible. Scott has been unwavering in his dedication to his community. He has always worked hard to bring positive changes to the Township of Tay. He has been diligent in creating connections and fostering good working relationships across our riding and across the province. I am thankful for his service and honoured to recognize him here in the House today. I also want to take this time to congratulate all the successful candidates who ran in the townships of Oral Medante, Ramera, Severn, Tay, Tiny, the city of Aurelia, and the towns of Midland and Penetanguishene, especially my mother, Jane Dunlop, who is the acclaimed deputy mayor of Severn Township. I want to thank all those who put their names forward to run in these elections. It takes a lot of time, effort, commitment, and sacrifice. 
Regardless if you won or lost, you gave all your communities a choice, and this is integral in supporting the democratic process. I look forward to working with all those who were elected as we continue to make the communities in Simcoe North thriving and prosperous. Thank you. Member st statements. The member for Kuwetnam. Um, uh, my comments uh, relate to the, uh, the cancellation of, uh, of uh, Bill 4, the Cap and Trade Cancellation Act. Uh, the Cancellation Act uh, means there is no uh, legislation in the Ontario to protect the environment, uh, especially uh, you know, in, in the north. Uh, climate change will change. Uh, the climate change will continue to be a de detriment uh, of the people of the far north. Uh, I would like to give some examples uh, on the, what climate change looks like in the, in the north, uh, an area that uh, encompasses uh, the, the far north region of the uh, state of following some of the uh, tribal council, Wendigo First Nations Council. Uh, quote We are restricted to only two forms of transportation to connect us to good services, goods and services, economic opportunities, and our families to the com and, and other communities. One is a very high cost of uh, air remote services. Uh, two is uh, unreliable winter roads. Due to climate change, uh, winter roads have become unreliable, uh, pronounced uh, uh, expensive and, and uh, to maintain and impassable. Uh, the impact of climate change and rising temperatures are more pronounced in, the, in, our, in, our, in my region. The result, um, our winter roads are no longer cold enough to create consistent and uh, long deep freezes to ensure our winter roads are uh, safe and secure. So I just wanted to talk about that, that the impacts of the, you know, airports are a lifeline and that we can't rely on those anymore. Thank you. The member for Carleton. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, it gives me great joy to announce that Tyson Lefebvre, a young man in my riding, is close to accomplishing his goal that has been almost five years in the making, raising $1 million for Make-A-Wish Eastern Ontario. Tyson was born with Piper syndrome, a rare genetic disorder affecting the shape of his head, hands, and feet. At just nine days old, he went through the first of 27 grueling surgeries he would need. Fast forward to November 12, 2012. Make-A-Wish Eastern Ontario flew ty uh, made Tyson's dream come true when they flew him out to meet his idol, Adam Sandler. <laughs> Shortly thereafter, Tyson, being the remarkable young man that he is, decided he was going to pay it forward. He set a goal to raise $1 million in five years for Make-A-Wish Eastern Ontario so that other children could live out their dreams just like he did. Since then, he has been working tirelessly, attending countless community events and even postponing surgeries in order to fundraise for his mission to a million. With only four days left and roughly $54,000 left to raise, I want to wish Tyson the best of luck, and I encourage everyone to head over to missiontoamillion.ca and donate to help Tyson reach his goal. Thank you. Member statements. The member for Northumberland, Peterborough South. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Yesterday, in the, the legislature welcomed multiple myeloma patients from across Ontario. They were here with Myeloma Canada to increase awareness of the impact of this relatively unknown cancer of the bone marrow. Patients met with many legislators and government officials to share their stories and increase awareness of this incurable cancer. Multiple myeloma impacts thousands of Canadians each year. Due to the lack of awareness on this disease and its symptoms, many patients go undiagnosed for a long time. Myeloma Canada Research Network is actively conducting research to improve patient outcomes and currently has 24 centres across Canada. With increased funding for research to find treatments and better access to new medicines, patients may be able to live longer and spend more time with their loved ones. I'd like to thank Myeloma Canada for taking the time to raise awareness yesterday to Martine and all of her staff at Myeloma Canada and encourage everyone to take a moment to read about this, about myeloma, and spread awareness in their respective communities. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Concludes our member statements for this afternoon. Reports by committees.